At the most basic level, your body is made up of energy. In other words, that energy organizes and condenses itself into the physical body that you see today in the mirror. But before it does that, it organizes itself into meridians and chakras. Chakras are centers of energy that are organized along these energy channels. Each one has a specific vibration and lends to a specific purpose. Essentially, each chakra is a specific expression of prana, which is life force energy. But what most people don't know about chakras is that they both emit and receive. <laughs>
everythingness. Everything. It's basically oneness. They considered light to be the combination of every other element. We're talking water, we're talking fire, we're talking earth, and we're talking air. The third eye chakra is also associated with the color indigo. It must be said that organizing specific parts of the body that belong to specific channels and specific chakras and no other chakra, it's a really limited way of seeing things. It's not the way that the body actually works, but we have a very difficult time understanding that different chakras actually co-govern areas of the body. So for the sake of your understanding, I've done my best to try to separate it out for you a bit, but it gets a lot more difficult when you look at the third eye chakra, a lot more difficult than even the other chakras. For example, the third eye chakra together with the crown chakra govern the pineal gland. A bit like a king and a queen in perfect balance of power would govern a kingdom. The pineal gland is a part of the human system that deserves its own episode. It is so central to the human capacity or inability to perceive beyond the physical reality. It is our desire to make things black and white, though, which wants us to say that a certain chakra governs a specific part of the body. That being said, the third eye chakra greatly influences the pituitary gland in conjunction with the throat chakra, also the hypothalamus, the eyes, the frontal sinuses, many parts of the brain, especially the outer portions of the brain, the skull, ears, nose, endocrine system, and parasympathetic nervous system. So to scare the crap out of you, I'm going to give you some common things that are associated with this chakra, the third eye chakra, being out of alignment. <laughs> some of the most common things that you'll see are seizures, you'll see dementia, you'll see headaches and migraines, hallucinations, dissociation, confusion, eye problems, hormone imbalances, all kinds of sleep disturbances, black and white thinking, no sense of direction, prejudices, strokes, brain tumors, sinusitis, paranoia, delusions, anxiety, depression, cynicism, closed-mindedness, denial, skull, scalp, and hair problems, ear problems, learning disabilities, loss of a sense of conscience or empathy, rigid perspectives, lack of ethics, mental illnesses, disturbances in appetite and temperature regulation. I know I've mentioned this before in my videos, but I'm going to reiterate it because it's so important. So many people who will teach you about chakras love to tell you that they have to be in balance, and in balance means it's possible for a chakra to be too open and too closed. That's not actually the case. This is our human sense of need to control something through diminishing it in some way. What's actually true is that if all chakras were perfectly open, there would be inherently an equilibrium established in the energy system. So what we're looking to do is not to detract or limit any one of our chakras in any way. We're looking to um, make each chakra open to the utmost capacity. And, and by each chakra doing that, we find this kind of homeostasis that we are wanting to achieve. All that being said, how do we open the third eye chakra and bring it into a state of alignment? One, commit to the path of integration. We could say the enemy of this chakra is duality and is polarity. Now, ironically, I'm going to have to take that back later because the more aware we become, the less we have any enemy. But for the sake of your understanding, lack of integration is the enemy of this chakra. So what we have to do is to end polarity and duality by getting outside of our own individual perspective. We've got to stop identifying with a singular perceptual reality, and that includes fragments within ourselves that have an individual perspective. To understand more about this, I want you to watch my video that's titled Fragmentation, the Worldwide Disease. Two, we must commit to the path of self-awareness above all. Why is this? Because obviously our own projections, our own fears, our own limiting thoughts are going to influence our capacity to bring in information from other places in the universe. We color and distort messages that are being sent to us because they're coming through our own perceptual reality. So the more aware of your own perceptual reality you are, and the more you have broken outside of it and can actually see yourself, the better of a channel for these energies you will be. Stretch your perspective, no matter how uncomfortable that may be. This is the order of the day. The more you do this, the less likely misinterpretation or any kind of false sight will be. Three, literally any practice that increases your awareness or stretches your perspective is going to enhance your third eye chakra. 
it makes absolutely no sense for me to sit here and be like, this is the best one, because there are so many, and obviously, certain people need to stretch their perspective in this way, and other people need to stretch their perspective in this way, but I'll give you some examples. Meditation, learning something, chanting, visualization, exercises that enhance intuition, self-questioning, divination, lucid dreaming, dream work, channeling, yoga, focus exercises, mindfulness techniques, art, or breath work. Literally, there has never been a video created by me and never will be a video created by me that does not increase the opening of your sixth chakra. Four, nothing clears the sixth chakra, your third eye chakra, more than shadow work. Why? Because the third eye chakra is all about awareness and shadow is the collective or the individual's unconscious. So they're completely juxtaposed. Remember how I said that duality and polarity was the nemesis of the third eye chakra? Well, the third eye chakra has another nemesis. That nemesis is illusion. Up until the day when your awareness or your perceptual reality is wide to the degree that it can include illusion as part of itself. Now for most of you, that's going to make absolutely no sense. And because of where most of you are, I'm not going to explain it either. But believe me that when you rewatch this video, you're going to laugh at what I just said. Shadow work is the work of making the unknown or subconscious known and seen. If you would like more awareness about this, watch my video titled, What is Shadow Work? Five, any practice that enhances your intuition and imagination is going to do wonders for opening your sixth chakra. In my opinion, the most important first step that you can take in the direction of intuition is getting in touch with your feelings, learning how to feel. We are living in the emotional dark age right now. Most people are so dissociated from their body that they can't feel the sensations that arrive in their body. And here's the thing. If you're going to be pulling energy from other places in the universe, pulling information, it's still going to translate through your body. So perceiving things that exist beyond the third dimensional reality is still going to be translated through your physical body as a sensation. And if you can't feel, if you're dissociated from your feelings, if you're desensitized from your feelings, it's going to be a lot more quiet of a message or you're going to miss the message entirely. For this reason, I suggest you watch my video titled How to Feel. The next best practice is creating. Now creating can be anything, but it can be as simple as creating art. When you're in the process of creating, you're not inhibiting yourself in any way. Your channels are completely open. Not only that, you have to use your imagination. Now, when we progress through our life experience, people love to shut down our imagination. Children are naturally born with a wicked imagination because we don't differentiate between what we imagine and what we can create to be real. But when we start to define that for kids and we say, that's just your imagination and that's what's real, is that people let go of their imagination. They let go of their capacity to create with their mind. Now, most of this information that is going to be coming to you, especially in the mind's eye to begin with, it's going to stretch your imagination. You're going to feel like you're imagining it, right? But if you have a limited imagination, you're not actually going to even be able to stretch far enough to receive many of these messages that are being given to you from outside of our time-space reality. Your mind actually will be so limited that it can't actually conceive it. In other words, if you can't be imaginative, the mind's eye is so limited, it will not be able to accommodate those images that exist beyond normal sight. It would be like fitting an ocean through a straw. Six, get away from or limit your exposure to electric fields and magnetic fields, unless you're using them intentionally. This includes your cell phone, this includes your computer, this includes um, electric wires. The frequency that is being emitted from this, including radiation sources, affects your sixth chakra the most. It affects all the chakra system, but it really affects that system. Seven, get sleep. I know this is easier said than done for many of us, but this chakra depends upon getting good sleep. So many things that apply to our sense of awareness in life are actually the result of our sleeping process. So when you're doing this, committing to getting enough sleep and making sure you're not staying up when you're not supposed to be staying up, it's important to get sleep in conjunction with your own circadian rhythms. And if you're in a really healthy state, circadian rhythms are going to naturally mirror or mimic the overall cycles of the earth you're living on, the stars, day and night. Eight, stargazing. 
For some of you, this stargazing is going to progress to sun gazing. Why? Because the sun is a star. <laughs> stargazing is to your third eye chakra what a bottle cleaner is to a bottle. It basically flushes the channel that has clogged up that energy um, flow that naturally comes in through that chakra. It forces entrainment with a frequency that transcends human perceptual limitations as well. Nine, silence. Silence is incredibly good, especially for your crown chakra and for this chakra, which is your third eye chakra. Silence is to the third eye chakra or your sixth chakra as fasting is to your sixth chakra. <laughs> it is a way of clearing the space and information inundating the chakra system and senses so as to make space for us to simply be and simply witness in a state of aware presence. This enhances our awareness and leads to clarity. Many of the sages of the old world went into periods of silence for this very reason. It creates not only deeper internal peace, but also deep inner listening, which leads to awareness. 10. Expose yourself to sunlight on a daily basis. Now, when it comes to the skin, it's best to expose the skin to direct sunlight for a certain amount of time. I'm not talking go cook yourself, but allow yourself to really absorb the energy of your primary star, which is called the sun. And when it comes to the eyes, some of you will try sun gazing, but indirect sunlight is okay. The thing is, don't wear sunglasses. It does incredible things for your sixth chakra to take those sunglasses off and let sunlight penetrate through the pupils of your eye. Not only does allowing sunlight in this way affect just the chakra, but it really affects all the glands associated with the chakra. 11. Stimulate this chakra with sound. When it comes to toning, the best for this chakra tend to be sham, also om, and tho. Now, play around with the pitch. So if I'm doing sham, I go sham, till I find whatever frequency vibrates this area of my body. And then, if you're doing toning, you hold it. Figure out and play with which one of these sounds works the best for you. You can also find binaural beats or different harmonics on the internet designed specifically for this chakra, and you can also expose yourself to crystal singing bowls designed for this chakra. That being said, the heart chakra is really responsive to music in general. So is this chakra. This chakra is all about awareness, and listening to all kinds of different types of music tends to stimulate this area of your body incredibly, because each time it listens to a new tone or a new lyric, it's gaining awareness of a whole new perspective. 12. The third eye chakra can be stimulated by the color indigo and by surrounding yourself with that color and wearing that color. However, what's a little interesting about this chakra is that it is the most stimulated by a multitude of different colors. This chakra loves the concept of a rainbow. It likes a bit of everything at once. This means being in environments with all different vibrant color varieties, eating a meal that includes all the colors in the spectrum, decorating your surroundings to be a riot of color instead of monotone. 13. So now that I'm going to talk to you about diet, because diet is important for all of your body, right? But it is so important, so important for your third eye chakra, it is insane. And it's one of the primary reasons why you see people who identify themselves as super spiritual or seers having such a strict regimen when it comes to what they consume. If you want to enhance your third eye chakra, you're going to have to eat a vegan diet. Do not eat any processed foods or pesticides, no refined sugar, including alcohol, which is in fact treated similarly in the body to sugar. Do not take calcium supplements or foods with calcium carbonate. If you feel you need calcium, take it in the form of sesame seeds, chia seeds, sunflower seeds, almonds, spinach, kale, and broccoli. Limit consumption of fluoride. This includes not using fluoride toothpaste and not drinking water or eating things with fluoride in it. Chlorine or bromide also have to be avoided. The denser that a food is and the more grounding it is, the more it's going to polarize or oppose this chakra. This is why so often when you see people go on these journeys where they want to use their third eye to increase their awareness in some way, they will severely limit or restrict whatever it is that they are eating. They want to only go for foods that are very, very light, that don't create a grounding in the body so that they can get out of their body so as to gain this type of awareness. This is why 
fasting is so incredibly good for this chakra. Here are some other things that you want to include if you want a super open third eye. Apple cider vinegar, foods that are rich in iodine like seaweed, goji berries, ginseng, ginkgo biloba, gotu cola, cranberries, green beans, spirulina, chlorella, and prunes. Eat foods that are naturally high in magnesium, not magnesium phosphate. Also eat tamarind fruit, raw cacao, coconut oil, lavender, blueberries, eyebright tea, calendula tea, elderberry, rosemary, and parsley. The more natural that a product or thing is when you take it in, the better it will be for your sixth chakra, and the more easy it will be for the energy to flow in and out of the center of your body. I also want to make a real serious point. You don't want to eat out of plastics or drink out of them and never touch a microwave. 14. Fasting. I made this point briefly in the point before, but I thought it should be its own point. Nothing responds to fasting quite like your third eye chakra. Here's why. When you're fasting, you're not inundating your body with anything that grounds it to the physical dimension, and so it becomes much, much easier for you to access awareness that is outside the physical dimension. That being said, really, really important to not use fasting in an unhealthy way. And so many people, especially those that identify themselves as spiritual, use fasting as a way to escape instead of to deliberately find certain information. Most people who are spiritual resist the physical dimension. Fasting is not to be used as a form of escapism. In other words, don't use fasting so as to dissociate from your body or from your lower chakras, which is easily done. But that being said, there is a reason why fasting is used as a method of creating greater spiritual awareness across cultures. 15. Use essential oils to help this chakra come into a state of alignment and to stimulate it. I'm going to give you a list of those that I consider to be the ones that enhance your third eye the most. My personal top picks are elderberry seed oil, almond blossom, pine, jasmine, juniper, monk's hood, be careful with that one, lupin, hyacinth, palo santo, manuka, nutmeg, china aster, rosewood, frankincense, myrrh, most all of the fruit essential oils, vanilla, galbanum, carrot seed, sandalwood, angelica, clary sage, and bay laurel. 16. It is, of course, always your personal choice, and you have to be very aware of the legalities of such a decision based on what area of the globe you live in. But shamanic medicines are designed specifically to open this chakra. Obviously, shamanic medicines affect all of the energy system as well, so it's not like they're just isolated to this. But they affect the third eye chakra so much that they have been used for thousands and thousands of years to increase our awareness and our perspective and our intuition. So what we're talking about is things like ayahuasca, iboga, psilocybin mushrooms, and peyote, just to name a few. These crash through the blockages that are preventing your third eye from opening in a way that some people cannot handle. So I have to issue a bit of a warning. Even though these medicines are amazing, and they have been used for thousands of years, and I have seen them do incredible things myself. Many people cannot integrate the awareness when they aren't ready for it. So what they do, basically, is these, they force this chakra open. And when most people, their individual perspective hasn't increased to the frequency yet where they are capable of stretching their perspective in that way, and then translating that perspective back into their physical reality, people can actually quite easily slip into a state of psychosis. So remember how I told you that when something is out of alignment, you tend to have all of these negative associations with the third eye chakra, right? So let's say that you don't have a super developed root chakra, and you go and you do one of these medicines, and it opens you so wide, you may see some of these side effects that I listed before, things like hallucinations, things like paranoia. Um, even suicidality can happen as a result. So it's important for you to know that even though it's an incredible tool for breaking through the barriers, it also has some potential risks. 17. Bring certain mineral spirits into your life. These stimulate and enhance your chakras. 
So I'm going to give you a list of what I consider to be, and yes, I do disagree with a great many people in this field about this. <laughs> I'm going to tell you which ones I consider to be the most stimulating for the third eye chakra. And the first, the one that I consider to be the absolute best, is Moonstone. Other stones that also intensely stimulate the third eye chakra best are tanzanite, opalite, glass, iolite, indigo kyanite, damburite, herkimer diamond, opal, blue and purple fluorite, alexandrite, labradorite, moldavite, pedalite, azurite, sapphire, and specific sodalite stones. What I mean by specific is that certain sodalite stones I have seen influencing the third eye chakra so intensely it has impressed me, but other sodalite stones, the individual stones themselves, don't influence it at all. As always, when you're picking out mineral entities to share your life with, it's best to let your intuition guide you towards them. We tend to get locked into an idea that certain stones affect certain parts of the body, but it can be completely surprising. A stone that wouldn't be associated with a specific chakra, for example, at all, might actually stimulate that chakra for whatever reason. So when you're around looking for these mineral spirits, let your intuition guide you more than your knowledge about what a specific stone should or shouldn't do. By intentionally doing things that enable your third eye chakra to open more and more and come more and more into alignment, you will be setting yourself up for a path of awareness and awakening. A path where you are able to expand your own perspective to such a degree that you are able to end the polarity that has caused so much suffering on this life on earth for thousands upon thousands of years. You will be setting yourself up for a life that is guided by intuition, a life that is also guided by creativity, which will land you directly on the path of your purpose, a path of complete possibilities and creation and all in your life will benefit as a result of it. So have a good week.